Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I will be your guide for this first of two modules related to roller alignment. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Roller alignment is so important because it has many serious effects on our customer, which is the web. Alignment may affect the flatness of the web going through a machine. Alignment determines web path, such as might be important for color-to-color -color registration and printing, as well as less demanding processes. Alignment can affect the incidence of web damage and even help cause web breaks on brittle products such as foil or paper. Alignment can affect wound roll quality. Finally, misalignment directly causes a very common type of wrinkling and can increase the incidence and severity of most types of wrinkling. These and other reasons should be more than sufficient motivation to study roller alignment. There are two ways to view alignment. The first way is a mechanics view of roller alignment. Here, we are concerned with how a maintenance department or contractor can measure roller positions and move rollers into alignment. They will be concerned with things like level and square and center lines. This mechanics view will be the focus of this paper. The second way to view alignment is from the perspective of our customer, the web. The web views alignment in a very different way. The web does not care at all about level and square. Those are merely a convenience of measurement. In fact, the machine could be out of level by one centimeter, and if every roller were precisely one centimeter out of level, the machine would run fine from a strictly web handling point of view. The web's primary concerns are in-plane bending and out-of-plane twisting. The web's point of view will be the focus of the companion paper given in the next module. I suspect that most people will think of certain hand tools when they want to check rollers they suspect are out of alignment. These common tools include precision machinist levels for measuring level and a set of pie tapes for checking parallelism or Better yet, a set of trammels that might have better accuracy than a pie tape. The advantages of hand tools are many. They are cheap, they are readily available, and they are simple to use. Hand tools can detect the more serious misalignment problems if the instruments are in great shape, and if they are used by people who are experienced, and if they are used with great care. Presuming all of these ifs are true, however, does not imply that you should use hand tools for a general alignment. As we will see in the next slide, while hand tools may be great for detecting misalignment, they are usually not useful for correcting misalignment. Let us begin by looking at the level. At best, a precision machinist level that is carefully checked and carefully used and carefully maintained in a velvet line box locked in a maintenance cabinet is only good to about one thousandth of an inch per foot or 100 microns per meter. Even assuming all of these conditions are met and these accuracies are adequate for your conditions, you should be aware that precision optics can be 20 times more accurate than the best level. The second and more serious problem is that there is no squaring tool in the hand toolbox. So let us grant that you have a level and parallelism instruments that are good enough. This still does not allow you to do a general machine alignment. Look at the figure. Let us first level rollers 1 through 4. Then we will go through with our pie tape and set rollers 1 and 2 parallel to each other and so on down the line. Setting rollers 1 and 2 parallel to each other only repeats the level operation. It does not square the rollers. Second. Hand tools accumulate or stack errors as you proceed down the line. Also note that even rollers that are perfectly level and parallel do not necessarily mean the web will track straight through the machine center line. Finally, the most serious problem of all with hand tools, that is the great, great, great big tendency to sloppiness.
Don't get me wrong. I did not say that hand tools don't have an important place in maintenance. They do. They are great ways to check for misalignment, even if they're not so great for actually aligning rollers. Second, there are many specific situations where hand tools are the best or only choice for alignment. Thus, even precision alignment companies who primarily rely on optics or lasers will also carry with them a very full set of hand tools. So, here is a three-step approach to a suspected alignment problems and where hand tools might fit in. Step one is to observe that you have a problem that might be related to misalignment. Problems like this include printer registration, poor wound roll edge quality, web breaks, and most particularly, a diagonal wrinkle. This does not mean that roller misalignment causes all cases of these problems, only that misalignment is a common cause of these problems. Common enough, that is, that alignment is the first thing that you should check. Step two is to verify a working theory that the problem might be made worse by misalignment. Here is where the hand tools come in handy. Merely check level with a level and parallel with a pie tape. If you are certain that you can detect a misalignment with these hand tools, then you have verified the theory that misalignment may be causing the problems or at least making them worse. To be certain of your me measurements, you can either repeat the setup and measurement and compare the results or use web handling theory to see if the direction of the measured misalignment makes sense given the details of the problem. Step three is then straightforward. Using precision tooling to either align that area that is giving you the most trouble or align the entire machine. The three optical tools that form the backbone of roller alignment in all but the smallest machinery includes the precision sight level, occasionally a theodolite, and the telescopic transit square. You might notice a similarity of instruments with those used by survey crews who might be setting in a building or a road. They are similar, but the instruments used for roller alignment are 10 to 100 times as accurate as surveyor's instruments. Aligning a machine involves first defining a center line. For new machines, this would be positioning the machine in some location in a building. In an existing machine, the procedure is a bit more complicated. The crew must find the positions and squareness of major parts of the machine. Then, center line is defined using an average or using a part of the machine that is most difficult to move. The last step is to move that center line into a precisely offset parallel that is located in an aisleway for convenience of measurement. This offset center line is usually marked by brass plugs with a pinprick in them, sometimes called monuments, and the line connecting the plugs is called a baseline or offset center line. People so often think of only two measures for alignment, level and square, that they might forget that there is a critical third measure, that is, the middle of the rollers are in the same center line. It is extremely common to find that individual modules making up a larger machine might be level and square, but are not on the same center line. The result would be a straight web that does not go through the otherwise aligned machine in the middle of all the rollers. If you had a guide in the machine, you might find that it continually runs off center to get the web to be centered on that location. This construction mistake is extremely serious because once wiring and piping are connected, it is next to impossible to move a module to the front or back, even if you could extend the base plate mountings far enough. Recall that one big limitation with hand tools is that you cannot square rollers. Squaring with optics is easy with a pair of TTS tooling. Here, one tool is set directly above and perfectly parallel to the baseline or offset centerline. 
This reference tool does not move. The second tool sights through the first. A precision prism makes a near perfect right angle to the baseline. A helper holds a precision ruler on each end of the roller for the other to read the difference in square. That difference is what is used to make a shim to move one end of that roller. The second tool is then moved to the next roller where it is again set parallel to the first tool and the process of comparing front and back square readings and shimming is repeated. You will note one serious limitation of optics. That is, line of sight on either the 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock positions is required to square. The sight level is not so limiting but still requires line of sight of both ends of a roller from some location. Machine designers should take line of sight into account when designing frames and guards to allow for easy optical alignment. While optical tooling serves as the backbone of most roller alignments in our web industries, there are others. Perhaps the most common method is the laser shaft alignment. Here a pair of lasers allows precision motor to roller shaft alignment so that couplings are not torn up. This replaces the dual dial indicator method that is quite time consuming. The next most common is a specialized gyroscope. The setup here is faster and taking readings are much faster than traditional optical tooling. However, there are two serious limitations. The first is that you can't buy the gyroscope. Instead, it only comes as a package that includes a technician from the one service company that makes them. This is not helpful if you have a suddenly arising emergency need when scheduling cannot be planned or when you want to do your own alignment as many of the larger web companies do. The second limitation is that the measurements are not as accurate as optics, even though they might be good enough for all but machines that run metal foil and paper mills who are fussier than most. Part of this reduction in accuracy comes from the measurement itself, and part is due to the short gauge length of the instrument, about 50 centimeters, instead of the full width measurement of scales held on the front and back ends of rollers. The gauge length is important when you have cylindricity errors in the surface of the roller. Finally, laser trackers are quite common until recently less accurate than optics. Still, I have one client that reports enormous satisfaction with speed and accuracy of lasers. Coordinate measuring stations are also in use, though I have no personal knowledge with this technique. Let us first consider some project management issues with regard to roller alignment. The first thing to note is that alignment is very expensive. By expensive, I'm not referring to the crew of two technicians and two mechanics that might cost more than $5,000 per day. Rather, the biggest cost is usually downtime. However, this biggest cost is not a factor on new machines or extensive rebuilds because alignment can take place while other work is done, such as electrical work. The implication here is that it is inexcusable not to align new machinery for no other reason and that it is the cheapest alignment you will ever get. The second thing to note is that alignment is something like weeding a garden or mowing a lawn. It is not a one-shot deal. Alignment might have to be done on a regular basis. Typically, a new machine would see at least three alignments in its life. The first alignment is when the machine is assembled in the machine builder's shop. The purpose here is to make sure that the parts fit and that any reworks can be done where resources are plentiful. The second alignment is when the machine is installed on its final resting place on your plant floor. Here, I do not merely mean modules. I mean every single roller, idlers included, in every direction. The third alignment might be a year or so after startup. The machine, and especially the foundation, may settle a bit, often far more than a hair's breadth. This third alignment has a couple of finer points. This may be a spot check that reveals either everything is still okay or that a few rollers might need to be moved. 
The movement between installation and a year later will give you clues as to how frequent subsequent alignments might need to be. Since alignment is expensive and might need to be done regularly, there are some things the designer and mechanic should do. First, the designer should make roller moves easy. One example is the best practice of using a shear ledge so that level can be done by shimming first and then squaring can be done without losing level when the bolts are loosened. This practice of a full level of all rollers followed by a full squaring is an artifact of the optical tooling that is not shared by some of the faster but less accurate methodologies. The mechanic can do much to speed up the process by eliminating roller out around, looseness, and other maintenance issues before the alignment crew arrives. There are some designs that are bolt bound and thus can't be practically aligned. The most common here is the match drilled side frames. Hopefully, the machine builder got them good enough and that they don't move too much from that spot because moves can be impractically difficult. Finally, I would like to call your attention to a couple of really great articles written by machine designers and alignment crews respectively. Here, for example, you will see best practices described such as laying down plug lines to define an offset to the machine center line that will take some time initially but will usually save time in the long run. Another best practice expectation is that a before and after report of readings on every single roller position in every direction be documented as well as the more important points summarized in words. There are many situations that can make alignment extra challenging and extra time consuming and thus extra expensive. These should be avoided at the design stage whenever possible. A big measurement challenge is live shaft bearing housings that are mounted at an angle. Here we measure level and square, but then must use trigonometry to determine the shim pack for bearing housings that are not mounted level. Other bearing housing challenges include no shear ledge so that level is lost when the bolts are loosened for squaring, requiring the technician to rig up a temporary ledge. Of course, bolt bound designs such as match drilled frames are practically impossible to realign, so we would hope that the machinist got them close enough to begin with. Roller alignments are only as good as the things the rollers are mounted to. Flimsy frames, Foundations that are not solid and any other form of looseness means that an alignment will not hold, perhaps not even long enough to complete the alignment itself. There are many roller situations that are challenging. Most of these are unavoidable in the sense that you don't specify a pivoting roller unless pivoting is required. Still, that does not make the alignment crew's job any easier because they must check at both ends of the stroke and perhaps mid-stroke and perhaps even repeating the measurements to check for looseness of the timing system. Suffice it to say that a good experienced crew can work around these situations, though that will take much longer than normal idler rollers. Optical tooling, the most common precision method, requires line of sight of the ends of the rollers and good flooring upon which to support the tripods. There are procedural problems that will arise that are best thought out before they are encountered. For example, what happens if you run into a problem roller that can't easily be moved into a target position within target tolerances? Do you struggle with it? Do you, the best, do, you do the best you can and leave it? What about the adjacent rollers? Do you split the difference, make them parallel? To finish, there are three situations that are most demanding. Any machine that runs metal foil is so demanding that we can't usually measure roller positions good enough to satisfy its stiff high modulus requirements. Similarly, close space rollers need to be even more closely aligned so that the web doesn't need to make a sharp in-plane bend in a short distance. Finally, Wheels are impossible to align because of their short gauge lengths. Review questions. 1. Why might we need to align? 
Two, what are the instrument-based definitions of alignment? Three, what are common measures of misalignment? Four, what are the common realignment instruments? Answers. One, why might we need to align? Path control problems, web breaks, and wrinkles at an angle. Two, what are the instrument-based definitions of alignment? Level, square, and common center lines. Three, what are common measures of misalignment? Precision level, pie tape, or trammel. Four, what are the common realignment instruments? Precision level, TTS, or gyroscopes, or lasers, all of which are specialized for roller alignment applications.